here with Lance Taylor, the Arnold Professor of International Cooperation and Development at the New School of Social Research. He's got a new book out, Maynard's Revenge, The Collapse of Free Market Macroeconomics. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much. So your book, let's talk about the title. What is Maynard's Revenge? Well, Maynard's Revenge would be the following, that uh, he was highly influential in economics up until around, let's say, 1960 and 1970, and then was completely overshadowed first by Milton Friedman and monetarism and subsequently by rational expectations. And one of the arguments in, in the book is that, is that this change in macroeconomic thinking ultimately was an extremely important underlying factor behind the crisis. Uh, and that way of thinking broke down, the collapse of free market macroeconomics broke down with the crisis. Uh, so in some sense, Maynard's revenge is that he was right after all. And, uh, and we suffered the consequences. And we suffered the consequences, yeah. Let's talk about your perceptions of Keynes thought and what you might call free market fundamentalist thought. Where, where do you see them differing? Well, Keynes, in my interpretation, basically said three or four terribly important things. One is that the uh, macroeconomic system is subject to what one can tell, call fundamental uncertainty. That, that is, we really cannot know a lot of what's going to happen in the future. Uh, or in Donald Rumsfeld's phrase, there are unknown unknowns about the future. And, and, uh, so we operate in that environment, and, and, and that is particularly important in financial markets. And so that was, I think, one terribly important point. A second point is, which he did not make so much of, but some of his followers, like Charles Kindleberger and Hyman Minsky, emphasized, is that there are two sets of prices in the capitalist system. There are, there are prices of goods and services, and which is what central bankers histori historically have worried about. And there are prices of assets, and, and asset prices and the price of goods and services don't necessarily move together, as, as we saw in the run-up to the crisis. And that can have sort of strong effects on, on the way that, that the economy operates. Third is that uh, Keynes designed the basic framework for macroeconomics, the national income and product accounts. He did that, and it was preceded by the Swedes in, in the early 30s. But, but around 1940, he invented the system of national accounting that, that we use. And built into that system is an equality between uh, expenditure and income. That is, all everything that gets spent ultimately generates income, and income feeds around into expenditure. But the really driving force is expenditure. Spending creates income, and that's what creates jobs. And uh, the fundamental difference between Keynes and uh, mainstream economics is that mainstream economics reverse the causality, essentially saying that spending, essentially saying, excuse me, that income is determined from the supply side and by the available stocks of capital and labor and, and raw materials and things like that. You determine output from the supply side and then that gets spent automatically. And that's, Keynes called that says law or says law after an early 19th century French economist. And the distinction, the key distinction between, uh, between Keynes and, and the mainstream then is one key distinction is, is that for Keynes, Say's law is not valid and the level of economic activity is determined by demand. And the mainstream also believes, contrary to Keynes, that uh, one can perfectly well describe all future events in terms of no probability distributions to, to be a bit technical or, or, in, or in terms of risks of things that are known which are going to happen. Or like a deck of cards. Like a deck you of cards, cards or, or, or dice. I use yeah. dice in the sure. book and, and, sure. and that's, uh, you know, you, you throw the dice, you know, you know the probabilities and that's right. well known. Keynes did not believe that. Uh, he actually wrote a treatise on probability uh, finished at around 1913, published in 1920 where he said that we just cannot put probability distributions up on the future. And, and that theme then recurred in his, in his major book, The General Theory, in, in 1936. So between the importance of fundamental uncertainty and the uh, absence of Say's law, there's a complete disjunction, really, between the kind of macroeconomics that Keynes was talking about in the general theory and the kind of macroeconomics that became a dominant in the 60s and 70s.